what are some of the positives you've seen from your defense? I like the big picture. The big picture, yeah. I like our hustle. I like how we're taking the ball away. I like the way we can create splash, you know, whether it be sacks, you know, just in terms of, of that thing. Um, you know, I think we've got some, you know, some good areas. I think I like some of the growth of our young people, and those are things I'm, you know, I'm kind of happy with right now. And I know we got a lot, long way to go, and, and to get a lot better, but that's that's. Where, right off the bat. Yeah, where would you like to see improve? Well, obviously, we've given up a couple big run plays, which really skews your run stats. But they're there. Oh, excuse my language. They're they're there. <laughs> and uh, so we got to get those off our tape. Um, and we've got to make sure that when we do get the run down, you know, we're getting that thing down. They're not rushing for over four yards of carry. And because um, I think we're, we're we're close, but we're not there yet. So until we get there where we want to be, then we've got to continue to work at that. So that run defense is really the, the biggest thing. I think we've uh, uh, cut down on the big plays, big pass plays. Uh, I know last year at this time, when we hit the break last year, we had way too many. Uh, so I feel good about where we are in that regard. Uh, but those are always areas that you got to you got to be better. We saw a little bit of uh, Joey outside and Pat in the slot. Mm -hmm. I know you know you can kind of plan with Joey and how much, but is is that the only thing I guess you've been waiting for to do more of that? Is just when Joey kind of felt like he's ready for more of those reps. Is there any, any hesitation about Pat going inside? Uh, no, no hesitation about Pat going inside. Uh, and really, what we've been doing is allowing Joey to earn his reps and earn the time. And, you know, as he earns it, you know, through the things he does in practice and the things he does in the game, then he sees more during the game. And I think that's what you're starting to see. He's starting to get it. He's starting to, to grow, starting to get better. Uh, you know, as a young guy, as they always do, they, they, there's growth at this time of the year. And so he's, he's playing more. Can the, same, can the same be said for Keanu Benton? Absolutely. Uh, Keanu has, has, has really been growing and playing, and he's, you know, he's shown some position flexibility, not just on the nose. You saw him play a little bit of four technique this last week. And so uh, we like where he's going as well. That's the third of the way in the season, almost. How are you doing the math now? A little more quarter way in the season. I know. I don't like when they got seven times. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're inside, I mean, to do a position group like overhaul as you guys did this yes. offseason. I mean, everybody, and then no one comes during camp even, who's, you know, jump up into the camp a little bit late. How do you kind of evaluate where that position group is? And is there is there growth there? Is there still meshing? Are they still better? I think they're getting better every week. And I thought last week was probably as a unit their best week together. Uh, you felt them. Uh, they were physical, they're fast, they made some splash plays, they were, you know, they were all over the field as a unit. And that's really what we, you know, kind of what we envisioned when we got those 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 three guys that, you know, the, all three of them would do a great job for us in, in their particular roles. And and I thought last week was was a, a sign of that growth. I'll be the one to ask it this week, is it Joey's time to start yet? <laughs> you're like you're like Mike, yeah, where's Mike at? Uh, uh, not right now. When the time comes, it'll come. Uh, when it comes to <laughs> not just defense, but also special teams, you see Miles kind of making plays on special teams. But how much of an impact and a role does he play within your safeties room as well? Well, he did. You know, Miles is uh, obviously I was I was I drafted Miles, um, and and so I, I wanted him here because I know he's a valuable guy in the locker room. I know he's a valuable valuable guy as a backup safety, you know, a box type safety, and then special teams. And so he he's. You know, he's valuable. You know, when Keanu got dinged, he came in the game and, you know, we don't miss a beat. So we, we you know, we like Miles. Uh, I like Miles. Miles does a great, he brings a great mindset to the team and he's, he's really valuable. If he needed to, could you move Levi into the slot and how much work has maybe he been able to get in that position? Move Levi into the slot, into the nickel if he had to. I don't think about those things. I think we have enough guys, quality guys that can play the slot that I wouldn't have to move him in there. We knew what our plan was with Patrick P. Uh, you know, and we have Sully. Uh, Dez is around. We got so we have you have guys who've played in the slot, so we won't have to. We we shouldn't have never have to make a wholesale change like that. Just let, go ahead. I just say like on hold. We talk about inside linebacker, talk about secondary. The, uh, I mean, the, the modern game is people are multiple and different different game plans, different weeks, different situations. Mm -hmm. So I get all that, but is that 
do you get to this point in the season? Do you feel like you want to have do you have an idea where you are? Or is everything fluid throughout? Is it you're in December and you're still switching things up? Yeah, that, I think uh, we have we, you know we have our core principles of who we are, but we're also flexible and fluid enough to adapt to who we're playing so that we're not stuck in trying to put a bad you know hey a bad matchup on the field. Uh, and so you know that'll be fluid probably uh, first through the rest of the year. The perception when you guys got Peterson was he would be more of an inside guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he was talking to us a lot about being a football player, not a cornerback. Right. Is, is he playing more outside than you'd prefer? Or is he is he kind of out of position as an outside corner right now? Not really. The the interesting thing is it's just about who who are we playing? Um, how much inside was there for him to play against Houston? How much inside was there for him to play against? Cleveland, you know, it just depends if they're if they're in 13 or or if they're in 22, you know, if, if they're heavy, we have to get heavy. Um, there was an opportunity to, to get Joey on the field more. There was an opportunity to move Pat inside. There was an opportunity to do those things. So it really just depends on the personnel that we're playing against. What where about, have you, what where have you seen the most growth from Joey from the time that you guys first got your hands on him in OTAs until this point? Everywhere. Everywhere. He's growing up right before our right, right before our eyes, he's growing up. So it's a lot of work left to be done, but I've seen growth in every part of his game since he since he's been here. When when right. Patrick Peterson came in, you know, there was a lot of talk about how he could mentor Joey and help him along. What have you seen in that regard behind closed doors and meeting rooms and things of that nature? Yeah, it's it's Joey's in a great situation. I mean, not just Pat. I mean, Levi's 28 years old. He's played a lot of football. Minka, I think, is like 26. He's played a lot of football. KZ has played a lot of football. I, I don't think Joey could be in a better situation than what he's in. So, uh, like you said, that stuff is behind closed doors, and it'll stay behind clo closed doors. But he has a bunch of really just big brothers to, to raise him and show him how to conduct himself in meetings and show him how to take care of his bodies. I mean, it, it's just a great situation for him. Grady, can a three-person rotation work? And is that, how, is that challenging or is that advantageous that you could put a guy in that, that's playing well at a certain time? I believe it's advantageous, particularly if you're going to play 75, maybe 80 plays a game. We're not in college where that's common. You look at the volume of plays and you look at the experience that we have, we really need to play as many guys as, as we can. So it's, it's an advantage for sure. What's the what area of his game needs to come the furthest at this point? Is it tackling? Is it reading pre-snap? What's, what's the greatest leap he still needs to make? Based on the film, we all need to tackle better. That's not just a Joey issue. That's a secondary issue. We all have to tackle better. So it's, it's, it's right now it's my goal to, to put us in a position where we are tackling better, particularly open field tackles. So that's an excellent question, but I don't think it's just geared towards Joey at all. I know when Pat P came in, he was saying that he wants to be versatile and move around in different spots. Does Joey maybe taking more of that base corner role allow Patrick to move around more and be in some of those more versatile spots that he it, wants to be? It helps tremendously. It helps tremendously. So we have to continue to coach him and, and groom Joey. Absolutely. How do you get those guys tackling better at this point of the year? It's still early. It feels like like we're late in the season, mm -hmm. but it's still early. So, so to your point of at this point in the year, we just have to keep working on it. We have to one, we have to take accountability. We have to talk about missed tackles when we see it on film. Two, we have to come to the practice field. And we have to work on angles. We have to work on fitting guys up, putting our bodies on guys. And then when you get a chance to position yourself live, you have to do that. And when you get to the game, it's a, it's a mindset. It's a mindset that when you get an opportunity to tackle, you're going to make it. Grady, how has the adjustment gone without Edmonds? How have KZ, how do you feel KZ and Neal have, have filled in? I, I believe right now we're exactly where we need to be. There are things that we need to get better at, and we will. But right now, we're exactly where we need to be. Two more. I think Minka is leading the team in tackles now, just as he did in 2021. Are there similarities there between that season and how this season is unfolding? I don't feel that. Some of that is about who he's on the field with, who's, who he's paired with. That dictates what he does on, on particular plays. So some of it is just, just about de facto situations that he's finding himself in.
in, yeah. in the second half of the last game, when you did put Joey in more, there were situations when Levi was on the sideline, or mm -hmm. Joey was on the, or uh, Pat. Pat was on the sideline. Mm -hmm. How did you want those guys to respond to that situation, and, and how did they respond to, to being there? Man, it was awesome. It was it was no flinch. It was no questioning. It was it was no issues at all. It was all about the team. It was all about the defense, and those guys were just ready to go in the game whenever we insert them back in the game. I know you tweeted after the game, you guys are back up. I mean, do you feel like it took maybe five weeks or so for this group to really gel on the field as maybe as well as you would hope they would? No, I just, um, for me, it's more the excitement of being at the top of the AFC North and uh, seeing the guys right there, the defensive unit, and playing really hard and doing whatever it takes to uh, ensure us, us, ourselves a victory. How uh, how much are these guys in line with exactly the kind of mentality that the AFC North needs? It seems like Elandon, Cole, Quan are all, even Mark are all pretty no-nonsense guys who uh, want to hit stuff that's moving in front of them. Yeah, I think it's, we just got a group of guys that they understand what it takes to play in this division, and they're willing to do whatever it takes. Uh, they're not going to back down from any challenges, whether I challenge or whether Coach T challenges them or whether our opponents challenge them. Um, we got a good group of guys that come to work every day, and they put in the work, and they go into the game understanding that, that, that they're prepared and that they're confident, um, and they're going to do whatever it takes to win. How have you been able to keep you know three three guys that have started in the NFL, you know, content with roles that they have and kind of balancing the playing time between them? I just say more hats off to them and their maturity levels. Yeah. It's because they played in the league for so long that they understand that everybody has a skill set that we can use to our advantage as a defensive unit, and everybody gets ready for every role, and we just let it we just let it roll. And guys understand that they make the best of what they get, and they don't worry about what they don't get. Um, and they give us the effort that it takes to win ball games. Is that something that could change on a week-to-week -week basis, depending on matchups and whatever teams you're? No, nah, it just you know we just let it roll. Yeah. You know, it's just by series, uh, by field position, by whatever. We just kind of you know everybody's ready at all times. How have you found managing that, Aaron? Has it been difficult? You know, try, try to work through those strengths and weaknesses? No. Nah. You just get everybody ready to play every snap. That's what you do. And I make sure everybody's ready to play every single snap. If we play 100 snaps, I'm I'm preparing each person to play each snap. And so when I get in the game, that's the least stressful part of my job. I just call guys out, guys go to work. You weren't here last year, but there wasn't a lot of splash plays from the inside linebacker group. And most of these guys weren't here last year either. How have they been able to balance creating uh, some of those big plays, but also just doing their jobs and making sure they're not, you know, getting outside of themselves to try to make a big play. Yeah, I, uh, I think they understand that the standards that they execute their job first. Um, splash plays come from great effort. They don't come from playing outside the scheme. But we got a group of guys that do their job at a high level with high effort and the good things are happening for them. But sometimes can come, a, I mean, it comes expectations. Yeah. And it can, some guys, it can change. I've seen where it's changed, guys, and it, he, it does not seem to affect him. He looks like he's still playing on his rookie deal. Those I mean, in terms guys, of the way he approaches his job. Those two guys, man, they're, I'm telling you, they don't. money does not change them in one way. Those two guys have worked the exact same way. I remember when Alex came in, it was during the COVID year, no preseason, and he was still impressive to us. The moment he got here, he knew the entire playbook and everything. Those guys are just tireless workers that, and they're, and they're cheap guys, too. Let's put it like that, too. They, they don't give, you're not going to see them in the nicest cars. That, newest clothes or anything like that. They just want to play football, come here, play football, and go home to their families. And I think they keep it simple, and that's what helps them out a lot. I really do. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Denzel, in terms of, of what you've gotten out of the outside linebackers here early, is that the expectation for those guys to be that disruptive every game? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we want to set the tone. We don't want to wait around for anybody else to make plays. We want to be the first guys making the plays. We want to be the guys that are hitting first coming out there. So that's literally a part of our plan. And then those guys are self-starters. You know, the outside backers, we have the entire room. Those guys are self-starters in the way that they come out and they are attacking these guys. We're always in attack mode no matter what, even if it's in the run game or in the pass game. And I think that just creates splash space for us. Houston did some different stuff mm -hmm. to you guys. It's like little crackbacks. Yeah, that yeah, nature. yeah. Do you expect to see more of that moving forward? Oh uh, yeah, and, and working with a guy like TJ, you see 
a tackle plus <laughs> every week. You know what I mean? So now it's just getting out. I got like Alex used to it and fluidly beating these guys because there's a way to beat the tackle pluses and the little things that are coming. You just have to see. And it's through film study. You usually know who's coming down to get it. Sometimes teams have good plans. You know what I mean? So we just try to work through it. And it's always you're going to have to beat two. That's how we feel like it is in Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Nick had a red hot preseason. And obviously with TJ and Alex ahead of him, it's yeah. kind of hard for him to see the field. Are you happy with his growth and his trajectory? Oh, yeah. I love Nick because Nick makes plays on, if you're watching special teams, Nick makes plays on special team you know it's not just about playing outside backer you got the two best edge rush guys in the nfl if you're the fourth third fourth guy in the room you got to be giving us something on special teams and nick is fired up he comes off the field and i'm looking at the special teams reps with him on, on the ipads too because that you know that's what he's into and then when he gets on the field he's getting on the field he's getting rushes and has good rushes and things like that he's just slowly getting into it he is he really is alex came out of college with a pretty advanced pass rush skill set how have you seen him though grow as a run defender is that something he's put what, like more work in do you feel like uh, and, and it seems like he's really taking a step forward now. Yeah, I would say Alex was the run defender was what we thought was his best first. I think he's really grown into the pass rush game to be the uh, pass rusher that we all know him to be now. Um, the run game is just what he does. He puts his hands on people, he works his releases, he gets off and he makes plays. And he's been doing that literally since his first year. You know what I mean? And his pass rush is the one, the thing that's just been keeps getting better and better. You know what I mean? Carl, what are you, uh, what are you seeing from Keanu in his uh, development here? I think he's a young, explosive young man, and um, he's he's learning what we do as a as a group, and um, he has natural ability that's starting to show up every Sunday. He's gotten more and more snaps here with Cam out. Is, yeah, is, I mean, is he earned those? Yes, he has. I mean, he's drafted by us in the second round, so he's earned it. His body of work in college got him drafted in the second round, and you see the things that we saw in college starting to show up here. Carl, I know it's next man up, but how tough is it next man up for a Cam Hayward, and how do you think you guys have done? I think it's business as usual. You know, you don't replace a Cam Haywood, but you got guys who got to step up and play, and I think the guys are doing an admirable job for us filling that space. Anyone that really has stuck out to you that, that's taken a step forward? Well, I think Leal did a great job the first couple of games before he got concussed, but um, I, I think um, Armand Watts is doing well. Um, Lotto Milk is playing well, and the rookie has showed some things because we started him this weekend. Montrevious isn't a, a classic nose tackle body, uh, but he does that job for you. What, what, may, what gives him the ability to do that? Because they're not classic offenses anymore. Nobody runs a, a fullback on the field. Everybody's zone block, and so he's athletic enough and strong enough to play that position, I think, and that's what gives him the ability to get on the field and be effective. You guys started Keanu mostly at the nose. Last week we saw more like you know, four and five type of kind of thing. How does he kind of handle some, not just more reps, but some additional kind of responsibility? I think this stuff we work in practice, and he was ready for it, and that's why we put him in the game. And I think he did a great job. He can rush the passer in the B gap, and he's strong enough to man it against the run. So, I mean, we, we pleased with, with his performance so far. Did you learn some things about some of these young guys with Cam out? Well, I think you do. You, you get to see them in the fire before you wanted to put them in there, and I think they responded well. Yeah. Is that uh, always a little bit of trepidation here as a head coach or as a coach? Is then your, your guys are like, they got to play now. Well, there's no trepidation. Coach Mitch used to say it when he was at LSU with me and when he was here, if a dog will bite, he'll bite as a puck. And these guys are learning how to bite. I mean, if you look at your run game overall, there's kind of a couple big ones, right, that are sort of impact the total. Where do you feel like you are in terms of where you are compared to where you want to be? Is it just those big runs or is there some other things you're still looking for? I think like Mike T says all the time, it's popcorn. One guy jumping out of a gap, one guy missing a tackle. And the NFL has a terrific way of finding out your problems. So we got to fix our problems so they don't keep showing up on tape.